One more thing to go over before we move on from factoring. These are polynomial identities, or in other words, they're factoring tricks that always work. And it would be very, very useful if you memorize these formulas. There's only three of them. They're going to come up frequently. And let's just get into writing them down. You can actually derive all of these for yourselves if you want. Go ahead, pause the video. Try to use some of those trinomial factoring tricks that we went over previously uh, with the big X. Try and figure out what some of these things work out to be. Uh, okay, so let's keep on moving with this. So I have here a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. The key to this identity, which is called perfect squares, is that you have a pair of perfect squares right here. That's necessary. And what this factors into is a plus b squared. That's it. Um, so let's see if we can use that identity in this uh, trinomial right here, x squared plus 10x plus 25. Of course, you could use the big X, but once you memorize these identities, you'll find that factoring goes literally in seconds, uh, if you know these things. So I'm looking at this and I say, wait a minute, that's, that's an x squared, that's a square. And this 25, that's also a perfect square. Maybe there's, uh, maybe this could work out for me. So what I do in my head is I say, okay, um, here, let's come over to the side here. I'm going to say b squared is 25. Well, that means b equals 5. And if uh, the other term is x squared, that means, okay, so what do we have? a squared equals x squared. That means a equals x. So what is 2ab? Well, that's going to be 2 times a is x times b is 5. That's 10x. Yes, that works. So we have ourselves a perfect square, and we can simply write this as x plus 5 squared. Okay, so that works out. Let's try it again here. We see this trinomial is a squared minus 2ab plus b squared. It looks so similar to the one above it. This is also called perfect squares. Okay, so perfect squares, when you're talking about an identity, refers to both of these things. In this case, it's a sum. In this case, uh, well, I don't want to call it a difference. It, let's just call them both perfect squares. So in this one down here, uh, instead of a plus b squared, it's just going to be a minus b squared. And if you go through the polynomial multiplication, if you don't believe me, you can work your, work your way backwards and see that it, uh, all the terms match up. Now let's go into this example. I'm going to say, uh, hey, in this example I have here, b squared equals 36, a squared equals, well, before we get, in, get into a squared, let's just figure out what b equals. If b squared is 36, then b equals 6. And if a squared equals 25x squared, then a equals 5x, right? Just the square root of it. So the test to see if perfect squares is going to work is quickly just doing a little multiplication here, saying 2 times a, a is 5x, times b, b is 6. Does that equal 60x, the term in the middle? And if you multiply this together, you'll see it does. So we have here another perfect square. This is going to be 5x, that's a, minus b, and b is 6. So 5x minus 6, don't forget the squared. Okay, so that is how you use the identity of perfect squares in either case. Now, one that comes up super common is this identity here called difference of squares. That's why I didn't want to call the other one a perfect difference of squares. This is difference of squares. And the reason it's called difference of squares is because you have a squared and b squared, and we're taking the difference of them, right? It's a squared minus b squared. So the formula for this, the one you should absolutely memorize, because this comes up so often, is a plus b times a minus b. Okay. All you have to do to confirm that this is a difference of squares is examine those two terms and, and ask yourself, are these actually squares? So if I say to myself, a squared equals 9x squared, what's the square root of that? That's uh, 3x. And if I say, okay, b squared equals 16, the square root of that is 4. So we simply write 3x plus 4 and 3x minus 4, and that is this example. Now, let's apply these to a little bit more challenging problem, and you may look at this and your first instinct is to just, you know, run away. It's terrible, right? I think there's actually three variables in here, but a, b, and there's a y floating around. Okay, so 
How do we deal with this? If you remember back to previous videos, what I told you to always, always do before you start heavy duty factoring is always look for a GCF. If you find the GCF, everything gets easier. And I can tell just from looking at this that one of the GCFs is three. I don't know if it gets to be a higher number than three, but I know three is gonna work because um, here's a trick about threes if you didn't know it. Two plus seven is nine, nine's divisible by three. That means 27 is divisible by three. Seven plus two, again, nine, it's divisible by three. Uh, four plus eight, that's 12. 12 is divisible by three, so 48 is divisible by three. So I know three is going to work, okay? So there's one common denominator. Maybe there's more. Uh, over here, I've got an a squared and a b. I've got an a, b, y, and a b, y squared. Not a whole lot to work with. However, we can pull out a factor of b, okay? So that's not nothing. We've got, uh, well, what's 48 divided by three? I think that is 16. So we've got 16a squared plus uh, 72 divided by 3, 14? I think it's 14. I'm going to say 14. 14, that is totally not it. 24, okay. 16a squared plus 24 uh, looks like ay. And then that last one is 9 divided by the b leaves just a y squared. Okay, so... Here's my, here's my polynomial after I pulled out a greatest common factor. And let's see what we can do here. If I say that this, well, let's, let's look. There's a common square uh, or a perfect square. 16a squared becomes 4a. Here's another perfect square. 9y squared becomes 3y. So I want to say to myself, what's that middle term in the perfect squares? It's 2 times... Uh, the first one times the last one. Go back up and look at the formulas a few minutes ago if you forget. 2 times 4a times 3y. What does that equal? Well, that's 8a times 3y, which is 24ay, which means we've got ourselves a perfect square. So let's just work through this. We still have that 3b from the outside. The square root of 16a squared is 4a. Uh, the square root of 9y squared is 3y. And there we go. We're done. So polynomial identities can save you a bit of time. And if you remember these general patterns and structures, they can make problems that seem completely unapproachable, like this beast, really quite quick.